skillet seared steak infused with garlic butter and thyme cooked alongside roasted potatoes make for the ultimate dinner at home. If you want a yummy recipe, then stick around. Aloha my kako, my name is Rel and welcome to my kitchen where I like to share all my favorite island and Hawaiian style recipes. And today we'll be making a delicious pan seared steak served alongside roasted potatoes. Super yummy and super easy. You don't need to go out to fancy restaurants to have delicious meals at home. I'd like to mahalo Foodland Hawaii for sponsoring this video. As always, thoughts and opinions are my own. And a big part of this recipe, of course, besides the steak is the garlic butter Butter and thyme infused into it. And at Foodland, they've got my ka'i whole peeled garlic. Now, peeling garlic is not so fun, but at Foodland, you can pick up a container like this and they've peeled it already for you. We'll be using that today in the recipe. So first we're gonna start with our steak and this is ribeye. You can use New York strip as well, but this is the one I like. You wanna make sure you have some marbling on it. That'll be some extra flavor. And then we'll get some salt and pepper. And we'll put that over like so. Flip that over, more salt, more pepper. And you wanna drop it up from a little bit higher. If you drop it low, you, It'll tend to like clump up in certain spots. So dropping it from higher, make sure that it's spread evenly throughout. Now we have a skillet here. Skillets are so awesome. They've got so many different things you can do with them, but I like to make steak in them. If you don't have a grill outside, this is another great way to cook it. You'll wanna set it over medium high, high heat, and you'll wanna make sure that it's ripping hot, but you don't wanna put anything into it until you're like ready to go. So the only other thing we'll have to do is crush up this garlic. And instead of chopping it, I like to use the garlic press. So we'll just use a couple. Depends how garlicky you like it. If you like more garlic, you can totally add more. So just put it in and this is a garlic press. It's a lifesaver. Talked about it a lot on my channel. You just squeeze it down like that. Put another piece in and squeeze it down. Two or three or four. Totally up to you. Your pan is ripping hot, so we'll only put the butter in right before we go because you don't want to burn the butter. So once you're ready, I'll go ahead and put the butter in first. Um, unsalted because we added salt here. If you only have salted butter, you're just gonna have to watch because sometimes there's a lot of salt in added into salted butter. And it'll go quickly. So we we'll wanna get the butter down and get it moving around. Add the garlic. And this is time. You'll just want a couple of sprigs in there and it'll start popping. And then you'll put the steak down and you'll just sear it for two to three minutes on each side. And you wanna make sure you press it down so the steak, all of it gets seared like that. And then the trick is using the spoon to scoop up the butter and kind of spread that over. But what you can do is get a pot holder. This is really hot, so don't try and grab it with your bare hands. But what you can do is get a pot holder and you can tip it so that the butter runs down. Put the butter over like that. You can even add a little bit more butter if you're finding that you don't have enough to scoop over. And this is called basting. So you wanna do that a few times. And depends how you like your steak. If you like it more well done, you can leave it longer. If you like it rare, my husband, he's like a well done steak kind of guy. Not me. I'm more of a medium rare medium. Let me know in the description box below, how do you like your steak? Then what we can do is flip it over and you see how it's seared on this side? You'll flip it and cook it on the other side. If you want it a little bit more seared, it has a little bit of browning, but you can leave it on a little bit longer. I'll let that one go a little longer so you can see what it'll look like. Don't forget, every time you grab the pan, I do that sometimes because with the nonstick pans, they have the coating on the handle, right? So you'll just wanna make sure you don't grab it. You'll probably learn if you do it one time. All right, flip this guy over, move the time over. That one probably could have went a little bit longer. And what you can do is put the time on top and that'll help get some of that flavor in. And then we can just baste again. A lot of the butter has soaked up. Might have to add a little bit more. 
There we go. It's the scooping technique that was lacking, not the butter. And while that's finishing searing up, we can go ahead and cut the potatoes. I like to use Yukon gold potatoes. You can leave the skin on for these, but if you have regular like russet potatoes, you could use those if you want, but I like these. If they've got ugly pieces like this, all you gotta do is trim those parts out. So I like to cut mine in half and then in half again. And then we'll make bite size. Yeah. Half an, you know what? I'm not a carpenter. Half an inch, maybe. See how that part is not so nice? You can just trim it off. Nothing like some good old steak and potatoes, huh? Half, half, bite-sized pieces again. That's the potatoes, that's good. Need some tongs to check the steak. Depends how crispy, crunchy you like it. See how this side has a little bit more? That's how you want it, more like that, where it has that um, charring on there. We'll let it rest for a little bit. This one, I think because I'm using the portable, the skillet's a little bit bigger than the heating element. Part of the steak that was off of it, not as seared. But you can push it down to kind of help it out. As you cook your steak, the temperature will rise as it sits. So you'll want to pull it off a little bit sooner than you would have wanted it done. Like rare is 145. So if you want a rare steak, you want to pull it off at like 135 because it might rise a little bit higher than that. Maybe 140. And there, you got that nice sear. So we can take this one off as well. We'll let that sit and then we'll toss the potatoes in. And those will crisp up nice and it goes so perfect. Steak and potatoes, you know, peanut butter and jelly. Whoa. Try not to throw your potatoes. My husband is the steak guy, the grill guy, the man man who wants to make things on the grill and you know, make fire. But you can get such a yummy steak without the grill if you have to. Like if you live in a smaller apartment say and you don't have a grill, you can totally make this at home, which is nice. And you'll just wanna get these to brown up as well. So same thing, you're gonna cook it and sear it up and then you'll flip it over and cook them on the other side. All right, now that the potatoes have browned up, now it depends, you could wait for it to cook all the way through in the skillet if you want, but another trick you can do is finish it off in the oven. Unfortunately, this skillet is not big enough to put both pieces of steak and all these potatoes in, so we'll just do one. So you'll just push the potatoes off to the side like that. The oven has been preheated to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and you'll set the steak back into the pan. And then you'll set this into the oven for 15 minutes or so just to get it cooked through. Now be sure you don't have a skillet that has, or a pan that can't go into the oven that doesn't have, or it has a protective handle on it because that won't go in. So we'll set this in the oven for about 15 minutes and we'll be right back. After about 15, 20 minutes, depends how soft you want your potatoes and how cooked through you want your steak, it'll be done and I'll get that. And this is what it looks like. Oh, so yummy. So you'll wanna make sure that your potatoes are fork tender, but we'll take out the steak and you wanna let it rest before you cut it. See, it has that nice sear on it. So we'll take that out. We'll let it rest for just a couple of minutes. Otherwise, if you cut it too soon, the juices will leak all out. So we'll leave that in. And I'll just spread this out to continue heating. And you'll just wanna make sure these are fork tender and like that. We'll be right back. And this is what it looks like after you let it sit. So we'll go ahead and give it a cut. This is what it looks like. If you're a meatitarian like I am and you love beef recipes, then you can check out the video here for more recipes. And until next time, ah we ho. for watching my mommy's video.